We've finally seen the much-awaited third Starship launch, and honestly, it was historic. Being the largest rocket ever developed, it took off without a hitch and completed 80% of its mission as planned. While the world is focusing on this achievement and congratulating SpaceX, guess who's fixated on the 20% that didn't go as planned? That's right, the FAA. Instead of joining in the congratulations, the FAA released a surprisingly biased statement after the launch. We'll dive into this topic in this video. Before we dive into the video, let me show you a fantastic tool that lets you create unique space-themed visuals like wallpapers or posters with just a few words, such as SpaceX's Starship on Mars, and it generate images like this. Imagine having a unique wallpaper or image that's exclusively yours because you generated it using AI. If you're interested in trying this out, check the link below. Starship embarked on its third historic flight on March 14th, taking off from SpaceX's Starbase in South Texas. This launch aimed to test the ambitious goal of safely returning both the first stage Super Heavy Booster and the Starship upper stage back to Earth planning for controlled ocean landings. However, despite all the preparations, both vehicles unfortunately disintegrated in the atmosphere during their return. The launch began with SpaceX confirming favorable conditions despite concerns about wind. As the countdown reached its final moments, the launch pad's water suppression system activated, preparing for the immense thrust. Moments later, the 33 Raptor engines on the booster ignited, propelling Starship into the sky and quickly clearing the launch pad area. Shortly after launch, the vehicle reached Max-Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure, a critical phase for any rocket. The broadcast showed various angles of the rocket ascending, thanks to multiple onboard cameras. At T plus 2 minutes and 44 seconds, a key event occurred, stage separation. This was executed flawlessly, with most of the booster engines shutting down except for three, allowing for a controlled separation. Immediately after, the upper stage's six engines ignited, marking the start of its journey to orbit. During its ascent, the booster initiated a boostback burn reorienting itself for a return to Earth. This maneuver was captured in incredible detail by the onboard cameras, showcasing the booster's controlled descent and re-entry preparations. As the booster approached the Gulf of Mexico, it performed a landing burn, aiming for a soft splashdown. Although the feed was lost shortly before landing, this maneuver is critical for SpaceX's vision of reusable rockets. Meanwhile, the upper stage continued its mission, performing a series of tests, including a propellant transfer demonstration and the operation of the payload door in space. These tests are essential for future missions, ensuring Starship's capability to carry out its intended functions. One of the final stages of the flight was the upper stage's re-entry. Despite losing the vehicle during this phase, the data gathered until the loss of signal provided SpaceX with valuable insights. The live feed showed the heat shield tiles and the effects of re-entry, highlighting the stresses experienced by the vehicle. Anyone who has been closely following the development of SpaceX's Starship can affirm that the third launch represented a substantial success, particularly when compared with the challenges faced during the first two flights. The first flight encountered numerous issues. Most notably, there was a significant problem with Booster 7, which experienced fires in its engine compartment due to methane buildup, a consequence of propellant leaks. This led to wire bundles melting and ultimately resulted in the loss of control over most of the booster's engines from the flight computer. The mission was ambitious, aiming for a complex flight profile that would demonstrate both stages' ability to perform controlled landings. However, it ended with the destruction of the vehicle shortly after liftoff, causing considerable damage to the launch pad. In the second flight, while many adjustments were made to address the first flight's issues, new challenges emerged. During the boostback burn, a blockage in the liquid oxygen filter led to progressive engine failures resulting in the destruction of the booster. Additionally, the flight termination of the Starship's second stage was triggered by a planned vent of liquid oxygen that led to several explosions, ultimately causing a loss of communication and shutting down all engines. Contrary to the initial flights, 
the third test flight showed significant improvements, particularly in terms of launch pad integrity and vehicle control up until the re-entry phase. Notably, the launch pad and its surrounding area remained undamaged thanks to the water deluge system installed. This system played a critical role in mitigating the intense forces exerted during liftoff. In the aftermath of SpaceX's third Starship test flight, a significant portion of the space community and the general public have been offering their congratulations to SpaceX for the substantial progress and the remarkable achievements marked by this launch. Instead of mentioning anything about their achievement, the FAA immediately labeled the event as a mishap. Their direct statement on Twitter was, a mishap occurred during the SpaceX Starship OFT-3 mission that launched from Boca Chica, Texas on March 14th. This is not the first time the FAA is facing criticism for its handling of SpaceX's Starship program, particularly regarding the perceived slow pace of regulatory approvals. Specifically, for the second Starship vehicle, SpaceX's vice president highlighted the readiness for flight, but faced weeks of waiting for an updated FAA launch license. The delay was attributed to the FAA's slow pace in completing launch licensing reviews, which was holding up the company's testing schedule. This shows the tension between SpaceX's readiness to proceed with test flights and the FAA's regulatory process. The broader implications of strict regulations on SpaceX's delayed launches extend beyond just one company. They impact the U.S.'s position in the global space race. As SpaceX stands as a primary representative of the U.S. in space exploration, regulatory delays hinder not only SpaceX but also the nation's competitive edge. Countries like China, facing fewer bureaucratic obstacles, are making significant strides with ambitious projects such as the Long March rocket series and plans for moon colonization threatening U.S. leadership in the space industry. While SpaceX continues to achieve significant milestones with the Starship rocket, there are discussions within the company about whether to cancel the Falcon Heavy rocket program. Despite being overshadowed by the Starship, the Falcon Heavy plays an important role in SpaceX's portfolio. After its initial successful launches in 2019, the Falcon Heavy faced a period of over three years without use. This was largely due to shifts in market demands and internal strategic decisions by SpaceX. Initially, Falcon Heavy was the most powerful operational rocket until the introduction of NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS. The Falcon Heavy uses three Falcon 9 boosters to increase its power, and it has successfully completed nine launches. However, despite its impressive power, the Falcon Heavy's launch frequency has been decreasing unexpectedly. This can be partly attributed to its unique position in SpaceX's rocket lineup. You see, the Falcon Heavy isn't as powerful as the upcoming Starship, yet it's larger and more complex than the Falcon 9. This middle ground positioning has made it somewhat less fitting for the range of missions that SpaceX is targeting. The Falcon 9 is suitable for a wide array of satellite launches, especially those involving smaller satellites. On the other hand, the Starship is being developed as a more powerful and fully reusable rocket designed to handle larger payloads and more ambitious missions such as deep space exploration. The Starship's expected capabilities and versatility in handling a wide range of missions make it a more suitable choice for future space exploration. As a result, the Falcon Heavy finds itself in a challenging position. It's not as well-suited as the Falcon 9 for smaller payload missions, nor does it match the anticipated power and versatility of the Starship for larger, more complex missions. This middle position has led to a reduced need for the Falcon Heavy within SpaceX's suite of launch options. The shift in the market for satellite launches played a significant role in the Falcon Heavy's reduced activity. The satellite industry's evolving needs and the enhanced capabilities of SpaceX's other rockets, particularly the Falcon 9, influenced the demand for the Falcon Heavy. The improved Falcon 9 became suitable for missions that might have previously required the Falcon Heavy, leading to a decrease in its use. As a result, when the Falcon Heavy resumed launches, the number of missions was relatively low, especially when compared to other famous rockets. For example, in 2019, the Falcon Heavy only conducted two launches, and then it saw no activity for the next three years. 
Even after its return in late 2022, the launch frequency didn't increase significantly. To put this in perspective, consider he Russian Soyuz rockets operational history. The Soyuz rockets have been launched hundreds of times, serving a variety of missions from crewed space flights to cargo resupplies. This high frequency is a stark contrast to the Falcon Heavy, which has only had nine launches since its introduction. The changing nature of space missions also impacted the Falcon Heavy's utilization. The current trend towards smaller satellites and constellations has lessened the need for the heavy lift capability of the Falcon Heavy. Many satellite missions are now effectively served by lighter launch vehicles like the Falcon 9, which provide a cheaper option. The Falcon 9 is listed at a price of $62 million, while the Falcon Heavy has a price tag of $90 million. This difference in cost can be a decisive factor for clients. The Falcon 9's reusable version can lift up to 5,500 kilograms to orbit, while its fully expendable version can lift 50% more payload, about 8,300 kilograms. In contrast, the Falcon Heavy can place a 22,000 kilogram into orbit in its fully expendable version, which is almost three times as much as its reusable version's maximum performance to orbit, listed at up to 8,000 kilograms. However, considering the higher cost of the Falcon Heavy, customers with lighter payloads may find the Falcon 9 to be a more economical choice. Given the current fact where the Falcon Heavy is not being used as frequently as expected, the question arises whether SpaceX might retire this rocket. The answer to this depends significantly on the progress and early development of SpaceX's Starship. The Starship is being developed as a fully reusable launch vehicle, which is a significant advancement over the partially reusable Falcon Heavy. Despite this, the Falcon Heavy currently has several scheduled launches. It has already secured contracts for various missions, including NASA and national security payloads. However, if Starship becomes operational and achieves its expected capabilities, it will likely lead to the eventual retirement of the Falcon Heavy. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.